my channel today for some piercing and piercer naughty no no's. If you're new, hi, how are ya? I'm real life trash. I am a piercer. I recently quit my piercing job, but I'm still a piercer. Um, I'm hoping to get back into it in a couple of years when my daughter's a bit more independent. Uh, but for now, I'm taking a break from it. There are some people that can heal any piercing. Rubbish jewellery, rubbishly done, bad angles, they can, they can heal it all. My partner is one of them. But this video is for the majority of people, like myself, where piercings take work. But I have compiled a list of piercer and piercing red flags just for you, and um, I got a few. I've been getting pierced since I was three months old. Please do not pierce your children's ears. So I was three months old when I got my ears pierced, and then I was eight when I got the second holes done, and then when I was 13, I discovered BME Zine, which was a website just full, like, Facebook for piercings and um, I became obsessed and I got my whole face pierced. So I've had pretty much everything done and I've settled on this little debacle. I do want some more though but I just don't have the patience for healing piercings anymore. So I've got my phone and I've got a very very long list of piercer red flags in no particular order. So let's start. Let's start with the basics. No ID checking and no consent form. Consent forms are a legally legally binding contract in the UK. They need to have a consent form whether that is digital or physical they need you need it you need it if something goes wrong and they don't have a consent it's more to protect them as well you could potentially sue them because there is no contract of what you said they could do luckily i don't have experience with this but if they don't check id as well it really weirds me out because come on i i know at 16 i was going into news agents buying alcohol like oh yeah yeah i'm 18. i got tattooed at 16 because they did not check id and, and at 16 i was like oh my god this is amazing i'm getting tattooed but now i'm like well if they weren't checking my id what else were they not doing that should be the basic 101 piercing studio checking your id even the studio i go to now like i'm clearly over 18 they still check my ID, they still write down my ID number, and they still make me do consent forms. Fantastic. That is how it should be. My first experience of me as a teen in a piercing studio. I had one piercing studio tell me I could never get my tongue pierced. They told me I could never have it done. And as a teen, I was like, you won't do what you tell me. So all I did was go to another studio and I got it done. I got my tongue pierced. I don't have it done now. For this reason if a studio tells you you can't have something done it doesn't always mean you physically cannot have it done it means having it done will result in many many issues i didn't realize this at the time but the reason they told me i couldn't have my tongue pierced is i can't stick my tongue out that's as far as i can stick my tongue out i got like a little midgy tongue and I've had my tongue pierced twice. I had two next to each other. Because there is no space in my little goblet mouth, when I have them pierced, they did so much damage to my teeth. Now, I know tongue piercings do damage your teeth no matter what. Don't tell me you've had yours for years and it hasn't damaged your teeth. It has. But the fact that there is no room in my mouth, it did irreparable damage. My teeth are fucked up from my tongue piercings. I wish so much I had listened to that first studio that said I couldn't have it done, but instead I went to a cheap piercer who used to pierce me and my partner for 10 pounds if we bought our own jewelry. Wow, if a studio lets you bring your own jewelry and charges you cheaper, no, no, no. And now that I think about it, like the jewelry we bought, we would just buy from a cheap shop in town. It was, a, it was nasty jewelry and it was never sterilized. It, you'd just pick it from a little, petri dish and you just take the size and the length you want. I remember getting my bridge done and doing this and literally picking out bars and putting them on the counter and holding them up to my bridge like no that's not long enough. No, no, oh that one will do. And then I went and got my bridge pierced. It's so... Wow! I was only like 15, 16 so ignorance is bliss. So if a good, a good studio and a good piercer tells you you can't, please listen to them. It's for a reason. It doesn't always mean you physically cannot have that piercing. It means that it won't work out. Because they want your money, obviously. So if they tell you that you can't, like they're losing out on your money, 
So there must be a legit reason. Whereas the scummy piercer down the street, who also wants your money, will do it regardless because they want your money. And I wish I had listened to them because the damage that has done, the damage to my teeth that has been done was definitely not worth tongue piercings. This one's pretty obvious. If they use piercing guns. I, I like, just getting serious for a moment. I genuinely do not understand how piercing guns are legal still in the UK. A piercing gun or a piercing mechanism, have you seen this? Just Essentials, Superdrug, I think Claire's Accessories now, Accessorize, where else does them? Carrots. All these studios, all these like big chain shops, they're like, we don't use piercing guns, we use disposable mechanisms. It's these shit. Those little white ones, they might be blue. And yes, it is disposable, but by God, it's still pushing a blunt instrument through your skin. There's this amazing video, I'm gonna put it here. You can see the difference between what a needle does and what a blunt stud does. The blunt stud causes tears and a needle just glides smoothly, it's, it's hollow, it has a hole in the middle, so it doesn't push, it doesn't push things out of the way it takes a part out so the jewelry can just sit in there perfectly whereas with the stud oh my god don't get me started on butterfly backs the amount of butterfly backs people came into the to my studio with because they don't allow room for swelling they are they're one size one size fits all and if you're i got i got chubby earlobes if you've got a chubby earlobe like me that's not gonna fit i can feel myself get riled up Claire's accessories pierced them in the window. In the window! Like, I cry when I get pierced, but imagine being pierced in the window for everyone to humiliate your ass. There's no sealed off area. There's no sterileness. There's no cleanliness. It's literally like, here's the piercing chair. Oh, here's a rack of jewelry. Oh, here's someone buying jewelry for their little one. I feel like this video is gonna be so disorganized because I rant and I go off on tangents. So piercing guns cannot be sterilized they cannot be put into an autoclave and sterilized they will melt which means that when you get pierced when someone gets pierced blood and bloodborne pathogens anything bodily fluids they will be on that gun regardless whether you can see them or not if you pierce somebody blood and fluids will be on that gun no matter what and then you pierce the next person you might wipe it with an alcohol wipe but that does bugger all you pierce the next person Boop. happy birthday you've got to go to the doctor it makes me so angry to think that people still take their kids to these places okay you may not be educated enough but i feel like it's common sense now that people know not to use piercing guns they cannot be cleaned guys and even if they could be cleaned you're still pushing a blunt object through your skin Do you know how much more that hurts would you rather be stabbed with a sh well i'd rather not be stabbed but would you rather be stabbed with a knife or a lead pipe because i know which one i'd rather take <sighs> i genuinely do not understand how piercing guns are not banned I'd, um, and if they say no we don't use piercing guns we use the disposable mechanisms it's just those little cheapy ones from aliexpress don't do them and besides the jewelry that comes with them is always trash there is there's always no nonsense jewelry it's never good quality god those things are like one pound fifty how are you gonna get good jewelry for one pound fifty i'm gonna right i'm gonna move on because i got jewelry on this list as well and i don't want to muscle in on too many topics all in one so yeah that one if they use piercing guns turn yourself go if they pierce nipples under 18 now I'm gonna be real with you guys. There are no laws in the UK regarding piercings. So aside from genitals and nipples. So technically, someone could bring their newborn baby into my piercing studio and be like, pierce her belly button, she wants to sparkle. And I could legally do it. There's a difference between legally and morally. Morally, Never. I would never, ever, ever, ever do that. And you as a parent need to go to CPS. So in the UK, it is illegal for anybody under the age of 16 to get their nipples pierced. 16 to 18, I think, is a very grey area. 
So though it is legal for 16 year olds to get their nipples pierced, I think doing it between 16 and 18 needs to be on a register. Yes, it may be legal, I don't know how it's legal, but it is morally incredibly wrong. At 16, you are still, your body is still growing, your body is still forming, you, you are a freaking child. And it may seem really cool when you're 16, you know, you get your nipple, I think I got mine done at 17. And guess what? The guy did turn out to be a perv. There is a very big line there. And if they pierce under 18 nipples, please, for the love of God, I know it may, I don't believe in God, but I know it may seem cool when you're 16. I got my nipple pierced. Trust me, don't, don't, please stay far, far away from that studio, from that piercer, and alert some kind of register to check their computer. So on the no consent form, if they take your information from your consent form, this happened to me. This happened with a piercer that I used to go to. There was a piercer in Ipswich that everybody used to go to. Um, it was a few years ago, it was when I started getting pierced and there wasn't a huge variety of piercers in this town and literally all my friends went to this person. And the, he used to take people's phone numbers from their consent forms. This was before social media, before Instagram and that. So you couldn't look up their Instagram handles. It just had phone numbers. So, and he used to text people from their consent forms and be like, hey, you're really cute. You know, do you want to come back? And oh my God, I can't just remind myself. Do you want to come back? Um, I want to learn to do this piercing. Can I test it out on you? He pierced one of my best friend's vaginas when she was 16 at his house. Let that sink in for a minute. And he got her phone number from her consent form, messaged her, said, hey, I want to practice doing some more uh, piercings. And he messaged her and she went around his house because, hey, when you're 16, free piercing. But at that age, you don't, your brain hasn't even formed. You don't think about, oh, wait, this 40 year old man is gonna be between my legs. I'm 16 and giving me a free piercing and taking pictures for his portfolio. For, it breaks my heart to say it. I said it in the tattoo video that I did of this, the red flags. Our industry is full, full of creeps. Yeah, and it breaks my heart to say because I love this industry so much. I love getting pierced. I love getting tattooed, but it is full of weirdos and it is full of predators and people that prey on vulnerable people. <sighs> That made me feel really sad to say that because I love I love this industry, but unfortunately, this is a, the industry is a predator's paradise. You have people come to you, you have them take off their clothes to get nipples pierced, to get uh, genital piercings, and then you're allowed to take picture with their consent. You're allowed to take a picture. I never take pictures of nipple piercings or nuni piercings because I know as me. I would be a little bit wary and I think it's awkward to ask someone as well when you have just pierced them. I'm like Jeffrey Dahmer voice. I'm just gonna take a picture. It makes, oh, just even saying it now, it makes me feel really uneasy. This is why I find when you find a really good piercer, I will continue to go to them. So this one, it has become huge because of TikTok. If they pierce snake eyes. Snake eyes is that horrible piercing at the end of your tongue. If they pierce that, run. Don't walk out the studio run no legit I, I, and i'm sure i'm gonna get loads of people tell me this whole video is gonna get people arguing with me i'm gonna get loads of people but my piercer did it and they're a professional no they're not baby no legit professional will do that piercing because it's not safe it's not safe it does in irreversible damage to the back of your teeth just stop talking for a minute stop stop shouting at your screen that i'm wrong and just let your mouth, let your tongue rest in your mouth. Where does it sit? Mine sits right at the, I've got a small mouth, but mine sits right at the back of my teeth. Now, if there is two balls on there, they're gonna clang on my teeth and they are going to do irreversible damage. There is no way to avoid it. Not only that, is your tongue is two muscles. It's two separate muscles. I think it's more than two, isn't it? It's separate. And when you bind them, you are causing the muscles to become constru construed, constru 
constricted constricted you are causing them to become constricted and stuck together causing your speech to get messed up the muscles to work harder because it can't enunciate words properly and you may not feel it you just you know you would probably won't feel it for a long long time it is not a good or a safe piercing to have and you will never convince me that it is and if your piercer does it I'm sorry baby they're not a professional get out of there putting hoops in fresh piercings now I'm ugh, I know loads you're gonna argue well I got this pierced with a hoop and it was fine some piercings do require hoops daifs um they work um, do, if they put a bar in a daif run daifs work immensely better with a hoop if you get your lip pierced and they put a hoop in run if they pierce your nose with a hoop run i can't stand it especially noses i really there's a studio here in woodbridge uh oh frick what they called and the old piercer there used to pierce noses with a hoop and my studio was in the next town and people would come to me after two weeks two weeks of getting pierced there and they'd be like but the piercer said i could change it to a hoop in two weeks because it would be healed sorry what i have had my nose pierced for over a year and if i put a hoop in it it gets irritated. Do you know how long cartilage takes to heal? Even soft cartilage, about a year. A lot of studios don't recommend you put a hoop in till about six to nine months. And I tried it after nine months and my nose was, was having none of it. It was like, nah! Any studio that puts a ring in a fresh piercing, that might be your desired look. Piercings may be instant gratification, but they require work and they require healing to be able to have that gratification for as long as possible. Plus the devastation when you have to take a piercing that you love out, that's a different kind of heartbreak. Like that actually, it breaks my heart. I have a routine. If I have to take a piercing out, I have to do it at night, just before I go to bed, so I can wake up and the piercing will have healed over but it won't be there and i just will i'll look in the mirror and it won't be there and i won't think about it <sighs> yeah that, that that hurts taking a piercing out but um oh obviously septums are great with a ring <laughs> like i've done if they put a bar in there i mean good luck to you but no rings and septums are great um i'm trying to think what else it's mainly noses and lips i see a lot um a lip piercing with a ring is so stupid because my lips swell huge and the thing with rings is they're they like they're like this aren't they and your skin tissue on your lip is like this um i don't have anything where the ways to show you so if you've got you've been pierced this way and you go against let's go that way and you have a cut i'm not showing you what i mean basically a ring stops your body swelling as far as it needs to because the curvature of the ring puts pressure on the ends of the tissue and also rings flip they go from side to side and they turn bringing in so much dirt and bacteria a bar may not be your desired look but having that for a few months and then swapping to a ring and having a piercing in a few months time is so much better than getting it pierced with a ring and having to take it out because guess what it didn't heal unless you're a magical unicorn that just heals every single piercing like my partner he can get whatever he whatever pierced and he never cleans them and he and they they heal of you know un unfortunately there are some people like that i have to work my ass off to heal piercings he gets them done bam <sighs> if they recommend you clean your piercing with salt water or hydrogen peroxide or what was the other one i saw antibacterial soap no the only thing, oh, contact lens solution, I once had someone come to my studio and say, I was told to use contact lens solution. Oh my God, is your piercing a contact lens? <sighs> no. And before you come for me for salt water, salt water is a very, very old school method to clean your piercings. It's very unlikely that you're gonna get the exact ratio of salt to water for it to actually clean your piercing. Too much salt will dry it out. Not enough salt will be the same as just washing it in the shower, which a lot of people do. And um, some piercers believe that that's the only way you should clean your piercings is in the shower. Um, I haven't tried that, but so I can't comment on it. But the only thing, the only, only thing you should be using to clean your piercings 
is sterile saline wound wash. The best one I personally use is Neomed. It's in a dark blue can. But it comes in a spray bottle, so it's completely sterilized in that can. And you spray it onto your piercing and then dry it. It's the best stuff. It's the only stuff that has healed my piercings because I'm not fannying about with salt water and putting too much salt in it, which will then dry my piercing out. I did used to use hydrogen peroxide and now I hear it and I'm like, don't burn your skin off. I think for my labrette, I, I used to give it to me in a little brown bottle, like a medicine bottle, and it was a pound. And you'd put it on, it would fizzle the scab away. And I thought it was great. I thought like, oh my God, it's actually working. You can see it fizzling. It's like eating your skin. It's way too harsh for your fresh piercing. Sterile saline wound wash. Only thing you should be using. I'm gonna say for everything. And I'm sure you're gonna tell me you thought water works great for you. I'm sure it does. Sterile saline wound wash is the only thing that proper professional piercers, APP members will recommend to you. There's a reason. <laughs> this one's for you, Blue Banana. If they claim their piercings can cure medical illnesses. So I love Blue Banana clothes, but I despise their piercings. So I keep getting adverts on Facebook for Blue Banana, which is an alternative clothing brand in the UK. And they do piercings. And I keep seeing adverts with um, a Dave piercing and it's not pierced right and they say medical Dave piercings 100 pounds now even at my good studio that I go to in London a Dave piercing isn't 100 pounds at a top end London studio but Blue Banana out here charging 100 pound for a piercing that they claim can cure migraines let's talk about that shall we so I have had uh, people in my studio, one a girl I know suffered from migraines, she came into my studio, I pierced her date, she left, she came back a few weeks later and she was like, I have not had a migraine since. Fantastic. I want so much to believe that a piercing can cure a migraine. There is no medical proof that it can. Do you know what I personally think it is? I personally believe it's a placebo. Our brains are so powerful that if we convince ourselves, I mean, I convince myself I look good every day. Here I am. I think we convince ourselves so much and we want it so much that our brain is like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna fix it. And she said she hasn't had a migraine since. But then I had someone else who come in, said it fixed their migraines for a month and then the migraines came back. So I, there is no medical scientific proof that a piercing can cure anything. I see this picture going around Instagram like, this piercing's for weight loss, this one's for headaches, this one's to turn you into Usain Bolt. Honestly, I don't believe piercings are anything other than cultural than aesthetic. It does wind me the wrong way when I see companies jumping on that bandwagon and claiming them to be something they are not and, and then charging you a hundred pound for it. A hundred quid. If people come to me at my studio and they're like, I want, I want the migraine piercing, I instantly know what they mean. And I do say to them, there is no scientific proof that this is going to cure your migraines. Because I don't wanna, I don't wanna say, great, migraines be gone. And then they come back in a month and like, I've still got migraines, why? Why, you told me they'd be gone. So anybody that comes in with, that asks for this piercing, I do specifically say there is no scientific proof. You know, I really hope it does help you, but I just need you to know that it might not. It, weirds me out that they advertise it for so much more money than every other piercing. It just comes across as such a con and I don't like it and I don't like that they do that. Oh, I, I just remembered. My friend's mum is an acupuncturist and I asked her. She said, okay, tell, tell, me, tell me the tea, give me the lowdown. Because I know pressure points are a thing and you know, if you push some, do you remember that thing in high school? Like if you push someone here, they'll die. And I asked her and I said, do Dave's like, as an, as an acupuncturist, do Dave's, would they make a difference? And she flat out said, no. There is nothing there. There is no pressure point there. There's pressure points inside your ear, but none in that exact position where the Dave goes. It is just cartilage. So I personally believe it is very much a placebo effect. If you believe it's gonna work, it will work. So in that sense, it would work, 
but it's not the piercing that's making it work, it's your brain. So I don't know. I just don't like brands that call it a migraine piercing or call it the weight loss piercing when there is no proof that that's what they do. It's like sell it's it's selling sunset, isn't it? It's selling something that is false. Sunset's not false, but you know, I don't know where I got that from. If your piercer offers free spray, the biggest question I get when I do nipple piercings is, do you numb them? No, I do not numb them, baby, because it's illegal. It is illegal for a piercer. I didn't know this, actually. I only learned this um, because I've had free spray used on me by piercers, um, and I only learned this when I was learning to pierce, but it is illegal. Only anesthetists can numb you. You can numb yourself, you can do it yourself, but someone in a professional setting, like a piercer, it's illegal for them to numb you. And I have had many a piercing free sprayed, and it, it, you know, it, it doesn't make that much difference. It takes that sharp edge off. It doesn't go through all the layers. But if they use free spray, send them, send their ass to jail, bro. They'll wish they had free spray there. It kind of sucks, you know, because I, I. If I could get pierced now without feeling pain, I would be covered because I'm a wimp now. If they use the same marker pen to mark customers. If so, a lot of piercers will use gentian violet on a cocktail stick or they will use a marker pen on a cocktail stick and then it's the cocktail stick that touches your skin. If they just use a marker pen and put that on you and then they use that same marker pen for the next person and then the next person and then the next person, no. That's how literally literally this is it's like think of it as a lipstick like i share lipstick with my friends gross i know but would you share lipstick with a stranger would you if someone came up to you in the toilets you know and just went sorry can i love your lipstick can i put some on oh great yeah yeah and then their friend goes oh great can i put some on too would you do that because i freaking wouldn't not only because my lipstick is nice because gross man a lot of cheap piercers do this because those little marker pens the little purple uh, violet ones are expensive they're like 50p a pen they're designed to be disposable that's why they're like this big so that adds up and if you're charging like 10 20 quid for a piercing that's already 50p off just for that pen so that's why a lot of people a lot of piercers use gentian violet or they use a cocktail stick with it but i have seen piercers that just flat out put the mark on so if they don't get out a clean pen and then chuck it and then mark you and then chuck it away afterwards oh, piercers, some piercers are nasty on that note, not showing you the piercing mark. I've had this. I, I had this a lot when um, when I used to get pierced by the dodgy piercer. I was young, I was dumb, I was just, you know, I used to get piercings for mental health. And he would just mark my piercings up, be like, yeah, that looks great. And never show me. And then I never used to think about it because the piercings were, um, they were more of a... a self-harm thing rather than getting a piercing. So I just wanted to feel that piercing but he never used to show me the mark and that left me with so many wonky piercings and i had nine around my lips at one that was the most i had at one time and then i used to take them out and get a few more and mix them up a little bit and they are all wonky i have so many scars down here that don't even line up my fault i guess i should have i should have looked at them I was 16 you know you're naive you're young they should show you the mark and you, it should be your decision where it goes. Because I have been talked out of marks. Um, when was it? It was when I used to got my nose pierced, like years and years and years ago. I wanted it lower so I could wear a ring. So the ones I have now are high, that if I wear a ring in them, have to, it has to be a giant ring to reach the hole. I wanted them here, by the way, because I wanted to wear little chains. I got, um, I got my nose pierced and they did it too high and I they put the mark on too high and I said I want it lower because I want to be able to wear a ring and I want the ring to be snug and they would not move that dot. They were like, no, but I don't think that would look great. That wouldn't look very nice. But this is where people tend to have it. And I got it done, you know, you kind of give in because you're like, well, they're the professional. They know what they're doing. And I got it done and I ended up taking it out because it wasn't where I wanted it to be. Yes, they are the professional and yes, they hopefully know what they're doing, but you are the one who is going to wake up and look at it every day. And especially if it's on your face, there's no hiding that shit. When they tell you to use tea tree oil on an irritation bump. Should we do keloids first or should we do irritation bumps? Okay, we'll go back. Let's rewind. 
when they tell you you've got keloids. So uh, keloids are an overgrowth of scar tissue. I suffer from a condition called hypertrophic scarring. I have scars on my arms where the scar tissue just kind of gets too excited and it fixes your scar too much and it gives you an overgrowth of scar tissue. Keloid scarring is a similar sort of thing, but the tissue doesn't stop. It doesn't stop growing and then you get these. These are keloids. And the only, the only, only way to get rid of a keloid is surgery. You can't do it with tea tree oil. You can't do it with <sighs> waving your arms about like a little fairy princess in a field of sunflowers. It's surgery. They have to be surgically removed. Even taking the piercing out doesn't stop keloids because then your body will heal the hole that has been left behind and produce more scar tissue. So if your piercer tells you you have keloids and when you have a little bump and they say oh it's a keloid, nine times out of ten it's not a keloid. And if you are worried that it is a keloid, go to your doctor. Your piercer won't be able to do f all about it. Your doctor will. So let's go back. Irritation bumps. Irritation bumps are very common in piercings and they are caused by exactly what they're called. Irritation. It can be anything. It can be makeup, it can be a hair caught in there, it can be that they're not being cleaned enough, uh, being slept on. I'm trying to think. Um, I've had them a few times. My nose get them, uh, this side of my nose gets them quite often because of makeup. When I put my eyeshadow on, the makeup falls right into my nose. So if I don't clean that off, it just gets a little stuck and I get a little bump and I know, I know how to get the bump away. <laughs> um, I've worked out this routine. Irritation bumps can be caused by the angle of the piercing. If the piercing isn't perp perpendicular, uh, with the t isn't straight with the tissue, it will cause irritation bumps. And if your piercing isn't pierced straight to the tissue, there's no saving it. You can't, it needs to be taken out and done again. If you have an irritation bump, the only, the only way to get rid of it is to find the cause of the irritation. Tea tree oil will do bugger all, bugger all. Aspirin paste, oh, it's so harsh. It will do bugger all. And before you're like, well, I did it and it worked for me. Well done, you're a unicorn. I tried tea tree oil years and years ago before I knew it wasn't safe. Didn't do anything. I tried aspirin paste. Didn't do anything. Because I wanted my nose pierced. This is literally like the 20th, 21st time I've got my nose pierced. No joke. And every time I had them done, I would get irritation bumps. So I put that down to, well, I can't have my nose pierced. What you call these then, bitch? I tried everything that you thought you could use to get those bumps away, and those bumps would never go away. And do you know what? Do you know what brought those bumps away? Do you know what got those bumps away? High quality jewelry. I used to always be pierced with stainless steel, and it was only when I read up online, you know, I was starting to learn. Um, it was only then I read up that not everybody can have stainless steel. It's like cheap, it dents, it's not a smooth finish, and things like that can cause irritation. So I went to the circle in London and I got pierced with high quality titanium. I've had them done for almost two years. Never had a problem. Oh, okay, aside from my makeup getting in this one, but haven't had bumps on this one. This one has been an absolute breeze. Haven't had an issue, all because of the jewelry. It's amazing. We'll touch on jewelry a bit later. But if they recommend tea tree oil or aspirin paste or anything like that, please don't do it. I have found a great way to get rid of irritation bumps if you if you are keeping it clean and you're not sleeping on it and, and the angle is great and the jewelry is great and it's just some people they just pop up just to wind your day up warm compressors help so much and chamomile compressors help so much and they're both natural and it just increases blood flow to the area and helps your body naturally heal it and they're great put down the tea tree I leave any studio that tells you to use tea tree. I can't believe that's still a thing, to be honest. That was a thing when I was like 16 and I was being pierced. It was, put tea tree on it. No. If they recommend no pull discs. I despise, despise no pull discs. What, what are you not pulling? What is this? What are you, what are you not pulling? I'll tell you why people think no pull discs work because they make the jewelry shorter. Sometimes an irritation is caused by ill-fitting jewelry. So let's say you've got a 10 millimeter bar in your ear and it's causing you irritation because it doesn't fit right and you know, it's flopping about a bit. You put a two millimeter no pull disc in and that takes that 10 millimeter bar down to eight millimeters. And look, oh my God, it's suddenly fine and it's not hurting anymore because this magical disc 
No. It's because you've made that 10mm bar an 8mm bar, and that's all you needed to do. Proper fitting jewellery is better than these crappy no-pull discs. What are you pulling? What are you? No pull? No pull? Piercings don't pull? Honestly, stay away from no pull discs. They're just a cheap little disc of plastic. If the issue of your piercing is caused by ill-fitting jewellery, change the jewellery length. Don't put no pull discs on. When they have pets in the studio. I am a crazy animal lady. I love animals. I love dogs. I'm a big dog person. I mean, clearly, I'm a bitch. Pet hair can get everywhere. I'm a ferret mum. All my clothes are covered in ferret hair. When they have pets running around the studio, it's, it's dirty, bro. You cannot keep a studio with pets in clean. I'm a pet mum. I have, I've forgotten how many ferrets. They're, my house is full of hair and ferret food because they hoard their food they take like little mouthfuls of it and then they go and hide it in places studios with pets in is dirty they're dirty if they're cheap i don't mean like if they do cheap apprentice piercings i mean if they are cheap if they're doing 10 pound body piercings or i see in america i'm in like loads of t piercing shaming groups um and i see studios offering like five dollar piercings how my equipment from the sterilization bags the water that goes into the sterilizer, the needle, the jewelry, the wipes, the prep, the gent the violet, the paper towels, that all costs more than $5. That probably, that costs more than $10. How, how? Well, I think I just answered my own question there. They're not. <sighs> Going to a cheap piercer may seem like, oh, it's fantastic, I'm getting cheap piercing. Remember what you're doing. You are getting someone to puncture your body and put a piece of jewellery in. Okay, that sounds really simple, but that's not all it is. It's marking, it's cleaning, it's sterilising, it's sterilising equipment afterwards. Bloodborne pathogens are a thing and they spread. I want to know that I'm being looked after, I want to know that my the jewellery that's going to be put into my body is clean, it's sterile. There's a studio here that did, uh, they did 10 pound piercings and I was literally like I don't know how you can afford to do that when it costs me 10 pound per piercing for just the setup. The only way they can afford to do 10 pound piercings is if they're not doing the cleaning, they're not doing the sterilizing, they're not doing the safe setup. I don't want to die from a bloodborne pathogen because I wanted a piercing and a piercer didn't want to pay to sterilize their stuff. Disgusting! I think the cheapest quali high quality jewellery, basic titanium, is about 12, 15 pounds in the UK. So that's just the jewellery cost. Just the jewellery cost. I will only go to studios that pierce for titanium. I don't do surgical steel because it doesn't work for my body. Every piercing I had messed up and I thought it was me and I went so long like, oh I can't have piercings, I get messed up, but it wasn't me. It was the jewellery th the whole time! It was the jewellery! So I'm out here living my best piercing life now because I know that I can get them done if they use titanium. Jewellery makes a big difference. If they use externally threaded jewellery, this is the bane of my life. Externally threaded jewellery should be barred. Um, so externally threaded jewellery is when you have the bar post or the ring post and it has the thread on the actual bar. What this does is when you put it in and out of your piercing, it irritates the hole because it the thread is bigger than the bar. It's only very, 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 very slightly, but it stretches and irritates the inside of the piercing hole and causes it to, especially if it's healing, you shouldn't be taking it out when it's healing anyway. If you do, it's just gonna cause irritation. The thing with internally threaded jewelry, the post is smooth and it will just slide in. And it's the ball that has the thread on it. And I find these stay in better as well because you can essentially have the thread a lot longer because the bar is longer than a ball is, so. High quality manufacturers don't make titanium externally threaded jewelry. They only make titanium internally. Please, for the love of God, I, ugh, TikTok is, I cannot stand acrylic jewellery as well. Do not come for me with your acrylic jewellery. And those Bioflex bars, like, it, I cannot take you seriously if you're wearing Bioflex. If they pierce industrials with Bioflex bars, 
The holes need to bend. No, they don't. They literally don't need to bend. What's gonna happen to a healing piercing if it's bending? It's not gonna heal, bro. Look, we're just going round and round in circles. I'd love to just have an argument with a shit piercer. I could just look in the mirror and talk to myself. <laughs> But yeah, any externally threaded jewellery is instant trash. Think about it really, like really think about it. I'm not here, like I don't have any money. I'm not here saying spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on your piercing jewellery. Uh, my jewellery I get from The Circle or I get from Ish, Isha, Isha body piercing or body jewellery. I tried to wear Neo Metal or Anata Metal. Um, they seem to be the ones that wear better for my body. But think about it realistically. It's in your skin. 24-7. Plastic jewellery is not safe. Do not tell me you have a plastic bar in your tongue and it has, protects your teeth. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Plastic ch cracks and chips easily. It will do just as much damage to your teeth as, as a metal ball will. Um, if you have your tongue pierced though, put discs rather than balls. Like that's a way to minimise the damage, but there still will be damage, but discs. Um, I don't know what else. I feel like I've, I had this list, but I feel like I've gone on so many tangents. Let's talk about their body language. You are giving somebody essentially your body to mark, possibly forever, you know, piercings can last forever. The ear piercings for one. If their body language is off, cause I said there's so many creeps in this industry, please run. There is a studio here, I, I feel like I've been talking so much about them recently in like every video I do that talks about piercings or tattoos, I've spoken about the studio. If their body language is off, the studio here, uh, I need to word it right. Um, so I went to this person and he pushed his dick against my leg when he pierced my lip. That didn't need to happen. Um, he would give hugs after every piercing, but only to female customers. He physically lifted me out of the chair like I was a baby. Like he put his hat, he refused to let me stand up after I had my lip pierced. Um, he put his hands under my armpits like, and, and, and lifted me up like I was a freaking child. And oh my god. And at the time, because I was young, I thought like, oh, he's nice. Like, it's just friendly. Nah. Now I'm on the other side of it. I'm like, I have never once picked someone up. I've made sure they're okay, you know, given them time, you know, professionally. I've never once like gone to someone. <laughs> Everybody gets a complimentary hug. I've never once done that. Like, don't touch me. Body language is a big thing. Simply put, if the vibes are off with the piercer, it's okay to leave. You, you don't have to get pierced. Even if you have an appointment, go. Save yourself. Comments, body language. They should be professional at every single step of the way of your piercing journey. Making comments about your body, your, the way you the way you look is not okay. I've never once said to someone that came in to get their nipple pierced, oh, you got some nice tits there. Never made any comment about their body. There is no need for me to. There is no need for me to tell someone that they've got nice boobs or um, that their boyfriend's really lucky. That was another thing he said. Um, there is, there's no need for it. And if they do, please protect yourself and go. If they tell you which side is the gay side, I didn't even realise this was still a thing. I had this woman come in with her little boy and he wanted his ear pierced. And um, he was, I can't remember how old he was, about 12, 13. And she asked me, he didn't, she asked me, which side is the gay side? Because that's the side he doesn't want pierced. And I literally, I took a step back and I was like, Oh, I don't know. Um, can you inform me so I can get that whole side pierced? When I was in high school, do you remember it was like right ear, right queer? <laughs> I have more piercings in my right ear though. <laughs> Facts. But if they answer that question, I feel like... I mean, I wouldn't ask that question anyway, but if I went with someone who just happened to ask that question and the piercer answered it, I feel like I would leave. <laughs> if they sterilise their jewellery altogether, so if the bar, if they don't take the jewellery apart to sterilise it, it's not sterilised. Jewellery needs to be fully dismantled to be sterilised. Um, if they put the whole bar in the, in the pouch, 
Um, this happened at my work a few times when other people have sterilized my equipment. They would put the whole solid bar in the pouch and then put it in the sterilizer. And then I'd have to open it, take it apart and do it again because it's not, it's not sterile. It's the same with clamps. If you put clamps in closed, they're not sterile. They need to be put in open so that every nook and cranny can be cleaned. You're putting people's lives at risk really when things are not cleaned properly. So if you notice that a sterile that the jewelry pouch is opened um, but the jewelry is already together or the clamp sterilized bag is open but the clamps are like this please like ask for different ones ask them to be cleaned again. Use your voice but also piercers don't do this. And last but not least, but only because I have to run to do the school run, if they don't have a piercing limit, if they will let you get as many piercings as you can in one sitting, um, the most I would do on one person was three, because the more your body is healing, the harder it's gonna be and the less likely they're gonna heal. I'm not about the money grab. I want you, at the end of the day, I want you to have a nice piercing. That is the best advert for your business, is if you've pierced someone and they've been happy and their piercing is healed, and that is the best advert you could ever ask for because then they're gonna go around and be like oh I got a pierce with Emily and it was great she was lovely and it was fantastic that's all I could ever ask for but if they pierce more than I think some places say four my limit was three just because most people couldn't even do three like bear in mind I can't two is as much as I can handle and and I tell you what everybody that came and booked in for three piercings would get two because it would usually be like earlobes and then maybe a top one nine times out of ten they would get the first two done and they wouldn't go for the third because Piercings take a lot out of you. They take a lot of toll on your body. But yeah, if they don't have a limit, that just it's money grab, isn't it? They just want your moolah and they don't care. I'd rather go to a piercer that cares, that cares about me and is gonna look after me every step of the way. One that I know is gonna answer my questions when I have a, a query or a worry or one that is gonna help me should I need their help. But also, don't harass your piercers. <laughs> Check your jewelry. Make sure it's do it right now. Make sure your jewelry's tight. So that is it, guys. I'm sorry this has been a bit more bit higgledy piggledy. I kind of got off topic. I wanted to do this really nice bullet pointy, but I definitely got sidetracked. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I hope I made my point. And obviously, I know and I know the comments are gonna be filled with, well, my piercer uses stainless steel, my piercer uses external thread jewelry, I got my ear pierced with bioflex, I use salt water, and I've been fine. Congratulations. This is just educating the people that may not know. Honestly, guys, you deserve the best. If you're paying for a piercing, you deserve it to be healed and done correctly at the end of the day. Some people are magical unicorns and they can heal absolutely everything. And just because it worked for someone else. I, I had this really good analogy, actually. I've crossed the road. I haven't. I'm very particular when I cross the road. It's only on Green Man. But I heard this analogy. I've crossed the road without looking a million times. But it doesn't mean that the next time I cross the road, I'm going to get to the other side in one piece. You may have healed many, many piercings with sea salt. Or you may have all your piercings with rubbish jewellery, but you don't know, like, that jewellery could be chipping inside your body. Here's some pictures of what rubbish jewellery can do to you. It can bend in your skin. It can chip away. This is just what cheap jewellery looks like when you take it out. It can break down. It can tarnish. And it does this inside your body. That's it guys, I'm gonna go. I've, I've been ranting and my brain is kerfuzzled now. If you have any other ones, please do add them to the comments down below. We love to discuss. If you have any really good piercing studios, please do comment them down below. Let's spread the words of the good guys, the guys that use the good jewelry, the guys that really want your piercing to survive. I go to the circle in Soho in London. I go to Rihanna and um, and she's amazing and she helps me with all my piercings and high freaking five to her. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble and rant. I actually have a sore throat because I've been going for like two hours, but I'm going to cut it all down. And before I go, I need to share a big shout out to Pearl on TikTok. I will link their TikTok down below because they really helped me with this list. Pearl Collective, I think they're in their, their TikTok or their stories and they stock high quality jewelry as well. So if you're from that area, I don't know what, Reading? I want to say Reading. Let's have a look. Newbury, Berkshire. So if you're from that area, definitely check out Pearl Collective. Much love boobs. Take care of yourself. And most of all, go to good pieces.
and stay weird. <laughs>